So uh, I'm a basic neuroscientist uh, with a lifelong interest in the question of how the brain is modified by experience, uh, particularly synaptic connections between neurons in the brain. And um, we've pursued that interest in a number of contexts, but the one that is most mature is trying to understand how we learn to see during development. So um, we're not fully formed at birth. Um, the visual system is not fully wired up. And for the um, connections to wire appropriately, there is an important role for the interaction with the sensory environment experience. Um, j just stepping back for a second, just to consider the challenge of seeing one world through two eyes. So there has to be a really precise matching or mapping of information from the two retinas onto common targets in the brain. That's how, how it is we don't see double. And that, is a, that level of precision is difficult to achieve by simple genetic instructions. And so it's, it was um, suspected uh, that was an important role for experience-dependent plasticity of those connections during, during early postnatal life. Um, and this um, hypothesis was tested in some fairly simple experiments in which uh, vision through one eye was disrupted by putting a patch over one eye. And when that patch was removed some weeks or months later, uh, what researchers discovered is that there was a severe visual impairment through that eye that had been patched. The retina was fine, no problem in the retina. The problem was that it had been miswired in the brain, so that these connections didn't mature normally. So this is a fascinating basic science question, which is how are those synaptic modifications modified? What's the trigger for that? Is it simply use it or lose it, or is the pattern of activity that's generated in the retina when it's patched, what's driving the plasticity. Um, an equally important uh, question is, uh, does that recover? How might, that, how might those connections recover from deprivation? Um, and how does that come about? And so this, these basic questions attracted a whole generation of, of neuroscientists, uh, my generation of neuroscientists. And, um, and we've been studying it very intensively for uh, many decades now. My first paper in this area was published 40 years ago. Um, and so, yes, it's a basic science question. It was uh, attracted a lot of interest because of its potential relevance to the neural basis of learning and memory, since learning and memory basically experiences leaving a trace in the brain. Um, how does that occur? Um, that's what we expect to see happening in the case of learning, all types of learning and memory. But this phenomenon that we study is also very relevant to a human clinical condition that's called amblyopia or lazy eye. So uh, many children, uh, millions of children, are born uh, with uh, a visual impairment through one eye. That, let me be more specific, uh, imbalanced vision in the two eyes. So for instance, the eyes aren't uh, properly aligned. So one eye drifts out or drifts in. So Side. Um, that's a condition called strabismus. Um, another mishap that is um, more rare but, but also more severe is to be born with a cataract in one eye. Um, another is just having um, a poor, refra an unequal refraction in the two eyes. So that the two eyes can't form a crisp image of the world at the same time. You can only view the world crisply through one eye or the other. These are three um, different common um, mishaps that they have in, co in common uh, that they disrupt the wiring of the brain centrally. So the most obvious analogy to what we study um, experimentally is the cataract in one eye. So you replace normal vision through one eye with a cloudy, cloudy eye, so it's just static coming in through that retina. Um, but the consequences are the same that we model in animals all the time, which is that there's a dramatic rewiring of the brain, a disconnection of these inputs from that deprived eye to neurons in the brain. 